Hey folks, Darren with Fervent Astronomy on location. Today talking to you about something that you might find interesting. It's a new lens, specifically a new Sigma lens. This is the Sigma APS-C, APS-C 12 millimeter F 1.4 DC lens. Uh, this is one of the newest lenses to sort of grace us with Sigma's new branding and yeah, they've dropped the DN. So this is a DC lens, 12 millimeter F 1.4 APS-C crop sensor lens. The one I'm holding here is for a Sony E-mount, but by the time you are watching this, you're going to know what other mounts it's going to be available for. I do want to say thanks to Sigma Canada for lending me this lens and allowing me to do a review. Of course, there, that is the extent of it. This lens goes back afterwards. There's no compensation or anything like that. Uh, I just get to play with something cool ahead of time, feel special a little bit, and make this video ahead of time for you folks. So yeah, I uh, am really curious to see how it'll perform. I'm going to more than likely be running it on a Sony A7R Mark V because I don't own the a6700 so it'll be in crop mode and it will be the crop version of whatever that camera is i will say it at some point during this video how many megapixels that is now this lens being one of the aps-c primes is very similar in build structure to the other primes that are already on the market it has a nice finish to it but it is a contemporary lens it's not an art series lens so it doesn't have as many bells and whistles we do have a clicky aperture ring with a little detente for the a setting if you want to control aperture through the camera that being said there is no extra click lock on here uh, for declicking or a aperture ring lock to lock that aperture so it's clicky aperture or keep it in A and just try not to bump it. Here we have a bayonet hood. It's a pedal style hood and you know it's actually not too bad. It's got a little rubberization and a little bit of knurling on it and let's see. Ooh, that's actually a nice focus ring. Of course electronically coupled but yeah this has some nice resistance to it should be good hopefully to get focus on the stars we've got a plastic pinch cap 62 millimeter filter thread on this one although more of a diminutive front element here this is probably to account for vignetting for filters and that type of thing so i'm assuming that's why it needs such a large filter mount but yeah should be interesting there's nothing really else to go over on the outside of this lens. We take the rear cap off. There is a hint of a gasket, so it should at least keep dust or moisture out of the bayonet. Although being a contemporary lens for APS-C, I don't suppose it's going to be fully weather sealed or anything like that. It's going to be roughly 18 millimeter equivalent F1.4. So it should be fast enough for some Astro. There might be some Aurora tonight. I don't know if you see Aurora in the video. I guess there was, but uh, yeah, let's pop into Lightroom and kind of see how it performed. Hey folks, welcome to Lightroom where we are looking at the Sigma 12 millimeter F 1.4 DC contemporary lens here, hopefully released in 2025. And this is a pre-release review. So all of this has happened before the lens is released. So hopefully you find this useful. There's a couple of things that I can't do just because of the nature of how these things work, such as I can't show you some of the profile corrections and stuff because they don't exist yet. But welcome, we'll do what we can. A couple of things to note as well. Samples, May 28, 2025. I'm up towards 53 degrees north. And because of that and the date, we don't really get dark skies. So you'll notice it's quite blue. That's because we basically only have twilight. I don't actually have true dark. And you'll notice that some of them are also kind of patchy green. What's going on? Well, being this far north, sun's in an active cycle. We're getting a lot of aurora. 
It's not quite ideal for the purposes of these lens tests, but it is at least a real world test. You can't argue that. So those are a couple caveats. Uh, here we're using the Sony a7R Mark V in its crop sensor mode, which is a 26 megapixel image. This is the same resolution as the Sony a6700 and approximately the same pixel size. I have the Sony mount version of the lens. I don't have a crop sensor body. Luckily, I do have basically equivalent there. So this will be very transferable to Sony users. However, there are other brands out there. And if this lens comes to a Canon RF mount, well, you've got a 32 megapixel sensor at play there. And if this lens comes to Fuji X mount, you're dealing with a 40 megapixel sensor. So suddenly our little 26 megapixel test here, we got even harsher conditions. So hopefully you can get some useful information from this if you are in one of those mounts. I'm going to imagine that it's going to be released for all of the major mounts. Nikon and Canon are, are playing nicer with APS-C lenses from third parties these days. But, you know, check the website when you're watching this review to see if it's available in your mount. Another thing to note, this is a crop sensor lens, of course. So while it is 12 millimeters in focal length, its field of view is equivalent to an 18 millimeter lens on a full frame camera. If you're Fuji, this will be the same as well. Canon, you're going to be a little bit tighter because there's a different conversion. That f1.4 aperture, though, does let in a fair amount of light. So that is going to be useful for astrophotography and being fairly wide. It can be used for things like Aurora. There is an Aurora time lapse that I took with this lens. And right about now, there should be a link to that popping up. I might tease it during this review at a couple of points. But if you want to watch the whole thing, please do. I enjoy people enjoying things that I make. I took all these samples tracked with the Fornax Mounts Light Track 2 for 60 seconds. So we get a nice 60 second exposure for each of them. Urban Astronomy, full disclosure, is Fornax's North American distributor. If you are curious about that tracker, head on over to fervenastronomy.com. You can learn about it. Because of the 60 seconds and the relative sky brightness and the Aurora and, and, and ISO 100 for all these, I usually take them at ISO 320, like we can see here, but this is pretty bright. It's not very useful, so I cranked it down. If you're wondering why am I even talking about this, there should be a link popping up to a video about ISO invariants, and it will explain to you why we do this and what this even is. Or if you prefer, there's a link in the description which will take you back to fervenastronomy.com, and you can see a whole written article linked there which will explain it in minute detail, and you can have at her that way. While you're there, you can find these samples in full raw, so you can download them, pixel peep, process them, do all that good stuff, see if this lens is the right lens for you. As a copyright holder, though I always do ask, please just use them in good faith to assess the lens for your personal use and not for anything else. Thanks much. And yeah, I think with that, we can get into the samples here. So here, first of all, we've got our focus sample using a Batnov mask. It makes these diffraction spikes where they line up symmetrically. We can see that we're in focus and we are, unfortunately, this particular one, they used vignettes a lot and it wasn't the right conditions to use this to assess field curvature, so we won't. Here is our f1.4 sample, and right off the bat we can see a lot of vignetting in the corners. You know, while the lens might have a large filter ring on it, the front element is quite a bit smaller, so I'm not surprised to see that there is vignetting. And because of the aurora, it's just kind of impossible really to assess center contrast, but if I ever get any information on that, I will pin it in a comment. Let's stop down. This is 1.4, 1.6, 1 1.8, not really clearing up the vignetting that much. I know it might look at some points like there's a dark spot in the center. Because of the aurora, I can't say whether or not that's an actual real thing or just because you're seeing a spot where the aurora is not as bright. So don't read too much into that. But for vignetting, f2, 2.2, 2.5, and 2.8, we're so dark that it's sort of beside the point. But yeah, the vignetting looks like it's cleaned up quite a bit as we stop down that far. So hopefully you'll find the right spot for you. I'm going to imagine there will be lens correction or you can use the sliders in your developing software to fix the vignetting. Shouldn't be that bad. If we plop into the center here, we can see that there is a little bit of chromatic aberration, very slight red and blue and purple. Now, because it's so bright on a bright field, it's probably not showing up as strong as it otherwise could be. But in this case, it doesn't look bad enough, even at this point, that I think it'll be too big of a deal. But, you know, please take that caveat and keep it in mind. Stars are not bloated, sphere collaboration, I wouldn't imagine this lens would have it, and it doesn't appear to. And if we take a peek here in the corner, here we can see that the lens does have astigmatism. A couple of you are like, no, that's coma. Friend, this is not. This is astigmatism. So you'll see in the corners and edges of many lenses, you'll get these little weird shapes, fighter jets or birds or all kinds of weird shapes. And this is two types of astigmatism. A lens, camera lens, just like your eye can get astigmatism. So we have tangential astigmatism. You know, imagine 
infinite radii from the center to the edge of the frame, anywhere that a star falls along that radius, it will stretch out, and that's called tangential astigmatism. At a right angle to that is sagittal astigmatism. So you get these little wingies on the side. And I know there's some extra little spikes and stuff in there, some little diffraction spikes possibly, something else going on, but in this case, you'll always have tangential along this radius, and sagittal will kind of act to ring the frame by intersecting that radius at a right angle. There, it's not always perfect. You'll see it curved sometimes and, and whatnot, but yeah, that's what we're seeing here. It'll get worse the closer to the edges and corners that you get. Typically, you know, we wouldn't really want to see it in the midframe. Let's see if we have it. Eh, there's a little bit. It's not too bad yet. Tiny little shape change, but it doesn't look awful. So for me, photos are viewed like this, not like this. So when this becomes a problem for me is when it becomes noticeable. It does two things. It changes star shapes and it makes them look bigger than they otherwise would be. If that is really making for a mess around the corners and edges, that's when it irks me. Here, I don't really think it's doing that much damage. I don't think that this is going to be something to worry about, but that's me. I'm not you. This is just how it performed. Now, what's coma? I mentioned that the astigmatism is not coma. Coma is when you get a one limb side of the star here will be nice and sharp, and then the other side will be fuzzy. Coma will all point towards the inside of the frame in the case of internal coma, or the edges in the case of external coma, and coma, or comatic aberration as it's called, is separate from astigmatism. And you can typically find it starting closer to the, the middle of the frame. It's named comatic aberration after comets. Comets get coma, fuzziness around them. So this is where the name comes from. And here, there might be a smidge, but if it's there, it's not too bad. You know, maybe if the field was a bit darker here, you could see a little something, something more. But in this case, I don't really think it's an issue. And there was a weirder star over here. So this star here, see, it's kind of fuzzy on both sides. I think this is maybe a, a close to center manifestation of aperture vignetting, but I'm not quite sure. I don't have a good sample for aperture vignetting like these bright star here. It mostly just went into astigmatism territory, so I don't think it's going to be a huge deal for this lens. And when it comes to focus, field curvature, I think this lens is actually pretty good. If you notice the size of the stars, I know that's a bit of an assortment, but let's pop to the edge. See, they're all basically the same size. I know the astigmatism is wreaking havoc on some of the brighter ones, but for the most part, they're staying around the same size. So I don't think field curvature is an issue with this lens. Field curvature is when different parts of the field will be in focus at different distances. So you might be focused perfectly in the center, but be out of focus on the edges or vice versa. In this case, I don't really think it's a problem. Now I can't assess distortion. I can't assess correction, so we won't go into that. I'm going to imagine there's probably a little barrel distortion or something here. Now let's take a peek at how this lens performs as we stop down. Just going to target for here so that we get the center of the frame, which is kind of in the top left hand corner of this field of view. And we get this weird star here at the bottom. And we can see what happens as we stop down. This is f1.4, f1.6. You know, the color shift, by the way, is the aurora. Don't get, uh, don't get too excited. You know, there's a little bit of chromatic aberration still. 1.8. Yeah, I'm going to say it's not changing too much, but it might be clearing up a little bit. This star certainly seems to look a little bit better. F2, 2.2, 2.5, 2.8. We're quite dark here already, but yeah, things look okay. Now let's look in the corner here. So here we have the top left-hand corner at F1.4. We've got this bright star that gives us a good view of the astigmatism. 1.6, not a big change. 1.8, you can see the shape of the sagittal astigmatism is changing a bit. It's flapping. <laughs> One, so that's 1.8. F2, we're cleaning up the sagittal a lot and we're just being left with that tangential astigmatism. You can see it's more long now than anything else. 2.2, 2.5. Again, we've got it cleaning up. We've even got what looks like diffraction spikes from the aperture blades. And 2.8, we're just basically left with tangential astigmatism at this point. The sagittal is all folded up, which I think is actually not too bad by about f1.8 here i think at this point it looks enough like a star that i don't think it would cause any problems i'm gonna hope that new contrast at 1.8 is pretty good this aperture might be a good option for a overall clean field of view and still relatively fast but i'll leave that up to you and the amount of post-processing that you want to do or don't want to do or whether or not you care about such things
because ultimately that's what these reviews are for. They are for you to make up your mind based on how the lens actually performs. If this is the lens for you, great. If this is not, look elsewhere. But overall, I personally feel pleasantly about this lens's performance. Please feel free to check for a pinned comment if I ever get any data about things like the lens's performance with a modified camera or whatnot, I will add it there. But uh, for now, let's pop out of Lightroom and wrap this up. Well, what'd you think? I have no idea yet how it performed. Look where I am. I'm still here. <laughs> so uh, obviously I'm pre-recording this. So uh, yeah, how it performed. I've talked about it. And uh, yeah, based on that, what do you think? Is this a lens for you? If you have a crop sensor body, you know, it's probably not going to be a bad option being as wide as it is. Yeah, 18 mil equivalent, pretty good. F1.4, lets a decent amount of light in. Of course, you're never going to get the same performance with crop sensor as full frame, but we won't bother with that. Better than the F2.8 lenses that we had to deal with back when, uh, you know, you had your Canon Rebel and the only real lens option was that Tokina. 11 to 16 millimeter zoom. Uh, I loved that lens, but it was not good. So hopefully this did better than that. Anyway, thank you so much. If you found this video interesting, informative, worth your time, do all the YouTube stuff, please. There's the, all the buttons, you know, the one with the thumb, the thumb one that does uh, a lot to help out. And yeah, hopefully we will see you in the next review. Thanks so much and take care.